Welcome to Guerrillapreneur, the art of waging small business warfare podcast, teaching Davids how to defeat Goliaths. Now here's your host, Mark Anthony Peterson. Welcome back to the podcast for entrepreneurs, startups, and business mavericks. If you're not a maverick, you don't have to go home, but you got to get up out of this podcast. In this podcast, we teach entrepreneurs how to defeat the corporate giant. Just like in the story of David and Goliath, David defeated a much taller and stronger Goliath, not by fighting the giant in hand-to-hand combat, but by using technology. A slingshot. The slingshot allowed the smaller David to attack from a distance that minimized the advantages that Goliath had over the smaller David. My name is Mark Anthony Peterson. I'm a serial entrepreneur, a futurist, and the managing executive at Serial Consulting a leading small business strategy and technology consulting firm. I am also the author of the book, Gorilla Panur, Small Business Strategy for Davids Wanting to Defeat Goliaths, which is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and iTunes. This podcast is brought to you by Serial Consulting. An idea can launch a business. A strategy can take it global. Guys, support the show. You can do that by liking the show sharing the show, commenting on the show, or subscribing to the show. I depend on you guerrillapreneurs to help spread our message to all corners of the globe that the small guy can beat the Goliath. So support the show. Please also check us out on patreon.com slash guerrillapreneur. Support the show. We're coming out with a new line of hats and shirts, guerrillapreneur themed merchandise, that we're going to be providing to everyone that supports the show. And what are we going to do with those proceeds? Yeah, we're going to invest them back in the show so we get bigger guests, better guests, better quality. And we're going to build out that fab lab in the Black Belt South. So support the show. Guys, today we have another exciting Mastermind interview, and it's with Miss Galit Ventura Rosen of GalitVenturaRosen.com, and she has a new book, The Successful Woman's Mindset. We go through and talk about that book, but we also talk about some of the themes, tips, and techniques that she provides to entrepreneurs to help them change their mindset. This show is not just for women, but it is especially for women. Men, you're going to get a lot out of it, too. Check it out. Enjoy this discussion with Galit Ventura Rosen and our unpacking of her new book, The Successful Woman's Mindset. Welcome back to the Gorilla Panua Podcast. And today we have a wonderful interview for you today with Galit Ventura Rosen. And we're going to talk about her, her book, The Successful Woman's Mindset. But I think she's going to be able to tell us more about that book and later in the interview, but give us some great insights on just how to build a, a, a great business by first changing our mindset. Galit, give the audience some details about your background because you have had a wonderful winding road that has led to books, uh, motivational speaking, coaching. Give us, give us a little bit of that history. Absolutely. So my story probably starts we'll say, around the age of 21, 22, um, when most people were finishing their first degree in college, and so was I, I just didn't feel, I didn't feel pulled to go get a job. That's really the truth. I, the idea of working for someone just didn't work in my mind. So that's when I went and I got my real estate license at the age of 21. In Nevada, you can get it at the age of 18. And it's not difficult to get your license. At the same time, I was finishing up my bachelor's degree in business here at the university in my city, and I decided that I wanted to go into real estate. 
And I started in a career, which is commercial real estate, where the average age at that time of an agent was around 40 and probably around 90 to 95% male. And I also found that most of my clients were about were male as well. And so it was really an industry where I had to motivate myself, empower myself, show myself the path to success. There wasn't a lot that I could learn from others that were like me at my age at that time. And from there, it pretty much grew to the idea that to get into commercial real estate, it wasn't that easy. So I found myself mentoring people that were interested in getting into the field. So probably over the years, I've mentored about five to eight men and women in my company that I still own today, 25 years later. And then, I don't know, around the age of 38, so many people at some point, they call it midlife crisis. I don't know what I call it, an awakening I was thinking I really wanted to do more. I wanted to help people. That's when I went back and got my master's degree in therapy and decided I wanted to really understand how the mind works. How do we change our behaviors? What is it that's truly holding us back? What are the obstacles and why? And a lot of times it's ourselves. So from there, after I got my master's degree, I found that so many women and also men were wanting to understand and learn how they could become entrepreneurs, how they could be high-performance experts in their professions. And that just kind of stemmed into people starting to ask me to speak at their organizations and luncheons. And that's pretty much how I got to the book because one of the topics I spoke on was the successful woman's mindset. And people kept asking, when was I going to write the book? And I published it in December. So that's a little bit about my history. Wow. That's a that's a, a very interesting path to get to where you are. Real estate is, uh, in and of itself, uh, a business that requires a lot of individual motivation because you're you're building a, a brand uh, yourself and and you're building a book of business that's all around being able to spot value uh, and motivate yourself to to go out and 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 get a get clients and and the right types of assets to, to move you forward. Did that experience help you in transitioning uh, to becoming a, an entrepreneur in other areas and, and helping other people uh, address that, that mindset shift? Absolutely. I think that there are people that are just natural entrepreneurs. I'm going to be honest with you. I really believe it. I came from a family where my parents moved to America right before I was born from another country, and I watched my dad work seven days a week, 14, 16-hour days to support us while my mom sewed my clothes for me and raised four of us. And of course, as I got older, being the oldest, that changed. And I got to watch a world where the woman and the man work together to be successful, to make a successful family, to have a successful life. And so even though I'm the only girl of four and the oldest, I was never, ever taught that a woman couldn't succeed as much as a man, and it was amazing. And I think for me, we are we live in a society, and as, as a mom of three, my oldest graduated college just a year ago, I have found that it's almost expected to just get a job. It's expected. It's okay. You go to college, and then you get a job. I don't think there's enough out there teaching us that, that you don't have to get a job, that it's possible to start your own business because there are so many tools out there that can help you today, so many centers and, and small business loans and, and different people that have the education that can teach you all day long. So I think for me, the mindset is a really large part of success because many people don't believe that they can be successful in opening their own business. It's a huge fear and risk, and they're concerned about failing. So for me, starting out at such a young age allowed me to almost grow my mindset as I was growing my businesses. Excellent. I uh, was just noting the fact that you said you're the, the oldest of four, the only female, and... Your book, The Successful Woman's Mindset, definitely speaks to women entrepreneurs. Have you noticed that there is a difference between the way men and women approach entrepreneurship? Are there some distinctive factors that separate 
how they approach it and how they succeed? Absolutely. So my book is really geared towards any woman. So if you're a stay-at-home mom and that's what makes you happy, that book, it would work for you. If you are a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, it would work for you and anybody in between. It's many times when we talk about the definition of success, in society we immediately think about your position in a company or your business or how much money you make. Well, I'm a big believer in you get to decide your definition of success. And I talk about how to do that in the book, how to find your own definition. But what I have found more than anything is that I decided to write my book first and foremost about women because, of course, I know women most best because I am one myself. And I can share the experiences of being a woman and working in an industry that really you needed to learn how to prove yourself and also learning that I was my biggest cheerleader and I was also my biggest enemy, but it was in my mind. So when you ask if men and women work differently or think differently or operate differently, absolutely I believe that. Now, it's never across the board because I believe that I have a lot of masculine uh, tendencies in the sense of the way that I operate and work, working in an industry with a lot of men, but I also have a lot of feminine. So I love to share that it's never across the board, but women tend to question themselves more, in my opinion, than men do. Women tend to not believe that they're qualified for a promotion or for a job or to start their own business. And it's interesting because as I, I inter- have interviewed hundreds and hundreds of women that are entrepreneurs or that have what we call side businesses or that work for somebody and really want to start their own business and are scared to. Now, I um, have seen over the last two to three years especially a tremendous uptick in the number of women that are launching businesses. And certainly there have been a many more women achieving the highest levels of, of success in Fortune 500 companies. Let's unpack your book a little more and, and talk through why we're seeing that mindset shift. Tell us about those five immediate ways to achieve though that, that goal success. So first and foremost, I'm really big about awareness. You can't change anything unless you're aware. You've got to be aware. If you're not aware of what's happening within yourself or within your life, how can you change it? So first of all, say it out loud. I am aware that I fear success. I am aware that I am concerned about disappointing others. Whatever that might look like for you, it could be a thousand different things, okay? For each person, it's completely different, but there's always a theme, and fear is a big one. The second thing that I would that I would suggest that you do is that you make a choice. Make a choice to change something today. When you start making a choice, like there's something so powerful in the words, I am making a choice to change whatever it might be. It might be your mindset. I mean, it could be that simple. I make a choice today to change my mindset, to be someone of success, to see myself as someone of success. Because if you can't see it, which is number three, now what happens? So one of the activities that I do in my workshops and with my clients is I ask them to envision. Now, not everybody is visual. I'm a very visual person, so I start with envisioning. So some people can't see it, but if they can't see it for themselves, then let me explain to you what I mean. I actually ask them to close their eyes and envision Can you see yourself as successful? What does it look like? How does it feel? What is success in your life? Is it a a brand new BMW or is it being able to send your kids to the best college in America? Or is it starting your own business and helping people in society or building something that will make life easier, whatever it might be. And so I really want you to envision it. Now, if you can't envision it, write it out like a story. But a lot of times I'll say envision it, then write it. And when you write it, now you're feeling it. And I believe success has a lot to do with emotion because how excited is somebody when their kid graduates from high school, right? They're so proud and they're so excited. Well, that kid should be just as excited as their parent for their next chapter. So it's really, really important to think about those things. And then one of the most important steps after you envision it and see it is 
a lot of people get stuck with the how. I don't know how, and then it stops. They're just done. They have an idea, and they don't know how. Well, I'm telling you more than anything, there are so many people out there that know how to do what you don't. I always use the example of an engineer building a bridge. Thankfully, the engineering of building bridges keeps getting better and better each time each generation. Why? Because the past generation of engineers is teaching the next generation of engineers, which means if you want to be an engineer and build a bridge, you can learn how. So the how is always out there. Don't let, you, don't let it stop you. And then the last step would be you've got to take action. I cannot tell you how many people have a thought, think about an idea, and then they go back to what we call life happens. You've got to take action. And I don't care if it's five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, an hour a week, put together those goals and start implementing those action steps to get to what you want to accomplish, which typically is going to be success for yourself. I love those steps. I absolutely love those steps because you implement these steps, you're going to negate what you mentioned earlier that a lot of women face, that self-doubt, that um, inability to see themselves as successful and qualified. You implement these steps and you're going to eventually erode all of those negative feelings and perceptions and get action. And what I, what I really like about it is the fact that you're forcing someone through uh, a logical set of steps that gets them to materialize the the, the goal, bring it into reality by writing it down, uh, and then the most important piece, not making themselves responsible for doing all the work, the how. I love the how. Um, I come across a lot of entrepreneurs who believe they have to wear every hat and know everything about their business in order to be successful as opposed to finding other successful people to help them carry the load and build the business. So is that part of what you coach as a performance expert with your with your with your clients and at your workshops? Is that part when you get that when you lay out the five, I assume you drill down into each one of these and give them tools on how to effectively implement them. Yes. So each part, to be honest with you, many of those steps are really just let's get started. But the key, key step to that is really what I call goal achieving success. And that in itself is a three-hour workshop. And basically what that does is it takes you through logical, logical steps to achieving your goals, setting your goals. Because, see, New Year's resolutions is a really fun one to talk about, Mark, because People set New Year's resolutions, and you know, what is it, a week to two weeks before we don't do them because they strive so high. So they put out this goal. We're going to call it, call it a goal. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. I believe in New Year's goals. You put out this goal. Let's just use one that's very common, losing weight, right? Right. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get in shape. But they never put anything solid behind it. So I'll give you a quick example. You want to lose weight. Great. Okay, let's break it down. What are you going to do to lose weight? How many times a week are you going to work out? What are you going to change in your habits? What are you going to change in your food? Now, this is where everybody starts getting very overwhelmed, and that's when they stop. They just stop because, first of all, they put out a goal, and they might say, I'm going to work out three hours a week when they haven't worked out for 10 minutes a week. Well, why wouldn't you start with 15 minutes a week? That's achievable. They set themselves up for failure. So one of the things I really love teaching is let's talk about a goal that is achievable. There's nothing wrong with putting huge goals out there. I do it all the time. It's in my nature. But I break it down into small little steps. And as many details and as many steps as you need to not feel overwhelmed, and then you turn around and you do what I call make an appointment with yourself. So I physically put appointments in my calendar. I live and breathe Google Calendar. And I put appointments in my calendar. Like, for example, when I wrote my book, I couldn't go to a cabin for a month and write a book. It's 250 pages. I had to make appointments with myself knowing today for two hours I'm doing nothing but writing. So make appointments with yourself what is logical in your life today that is achievable. And then sit down and 
start. The biggest thing for people is they do not start. They talk about it and they never do anything about it. How do you help them get over that last part, that start? You're right. People can set goals uh, and just that that last little piece, you know, getting the, the the spark to get the fire going. What what what's what's your secret sauce to getting people to to do that? Oh, it's so interesting. I held I just held a workshop in Montreal. It was a three hour workshop for twenty five women in the leadership program. I just got back, and one of the things that kept coming up over and over, and it was a woman's workshop, was procrastination. How do I get over procrastination? Because if you think about it, right, you want to succeed. You're excited about accomplishing this goal. Let's say you want to look for a new job. You're so excited, but then you keep avoiding it. So I looked at the person and I said, your problem is not procrastination. I don't have a secret to how to stop procrastinating. Let me tell you why you're procrastinating instead. So that way you can work through why. So this is what you do. You ask yourself, why do I keep holding off from doing something that could potentially get me to where I want to go. You've got to ask yourself, and I'm telling you over and over and over again, it's fear. Over and over, don't get me wrong, there's no, I haven't looked at the statistics, which is just from my experience with a few thousand people that I've spoken to, hundreds of women that I've worked with, fear is a big one. They have the fear of maybe failure. They might have the fear of disappointing someone. They might have the fear of success or rejection. It could be so many different things. But procrastination is typically related to either fear or what we talked about before, which is not knowing how. So you sit down and you're really excited to do something. And you sit down, you're ready to go, and you don't know how. And then you stop. So my suggestion to anybody that needs that secret sauce is ask yourself why and then find the solution for the why. So if it's fear, ask yourself why you fear it. What is it that's holding you back? If it's the how, find the how so you can start the steps. And then the last piece, which I mentioned is huge, is make an appointment with yourself the way you would with your doctor or with a client or if your kids had an after-school activity. You wouldn't cancel any of those appointments or a vacation. Who cancels vacations? Now you sit back and you say, okay, I'm going to stick to this appointment and I'm going to figure out my way through this so I can go ahead and get a step closer to what I want to accomplish. I like that. Make an appointment with yourself if you're going to achieve the goals that you've set. Wow. Love that. Love that. Explain to me the importance of the mindset check. As I was going through materials and, and, and background on your book, I came across the mindset check. Can you talk to us about that? Absolutely. For some reason, and I haven't figured that piece out, and I promise when I do I will share it with the world, our mind works against us more than it does for us. And we have to be aware of that. We have to be aware that if something goes wrong in our life, the first thing that we do is say, oh, everything's going to go wrong today. Or if we fail at something, the first thing we do is say, oh, I'm not going to try again. There's so many different things that we say to ourselves that actually keep us from wanting, excuse me, keep us from succeeding. So when I say mindset check, you have to check your mindset. It's really that simple. What is happening right now when I'm going to go and walk into this networking organization where I don't know one person and I'm really fearful and I think instead I'll stay home and watch Netflix? Well, yeah, that's a comfortable. So when you mindset check yourself, you're asking yourself, why is this working against me instead of for me? Why am I not my biggest cheerleader? And again, I need to go back to it, but you know repeating things is what we have to do on a daily basis to remember it typically falls back on not wanting to be uncomfortable or fear or something that's holding you back. And in all honesty, I can teach the steps to success all day long in my sleep. But the mindset piece is what always ends up popping up. I'm not a mindset coach. I am a business coach. I am someone that works with people in business, in their professions, in their careers. But the mindset piece always shows up because they will not 
whoever that person might be, will not go to the next level in their life, business, or career until they check themselves and work through. That's the key. You must work through whatever it is that's working against your mind. So a quick, quick activity I can give your listeners. Whenever a negative thought pops up, and I learned this from my therapy background, my master's in therapy, I want you to rebuttal it like you would an attorney would in court. Three positive, fact-based rebuttals to your negative thought. Because negative thoughts are based on emotion. And emotion is not fact-based. It can't be proven. So now I want you to turn it around. So quick example. Uh, Mark, give me, a, give me a negative thought that you, some people might have that you know or one you could think of. Can't raise enough money to launch my business. Perfect. Can't raise enough money to launch my business. Okay, first of all, whoever's listening, that's very common. First thing you need to do is you need to get rid of the word can't. Can't is a fail all day long because you can. So instead, you want to change the words and you want to maybe reframe it to I am struggling, I am challenged, I don't know how to. Do you see what I just did there, Mark? Right. You switch just the word. So let's say now we change it to. I'm not sure how to raise money for my business. Do you see what just happened in that statement? So now you go and you find out how. Now, when you do the rebuttal statement, I don't know how to raise money for my business, you say, oh, wait, how many businesses are started every day in America? How many loans are out there through SBA and private and grants and funds that give people money? loan people money so they can start their own businesses. And then the last one I would do is research. Research is very fact-based. I would seriously go into Google and Google, how do I raise money to start my own business? How do I find money? I'm telling you, you can read from today till the day you die on Google of ways to raise money to start your business. So do you see what I did there? And, and what's interesting more than anything is our negative thoughts are typically repetitive. So if you sat down and wrote down your negative thoughts for an entire day, which, by the way, probably won't be more than a page in writing or type, now you can sit there and rebuttal each negative thought. So keep it, keep it close to you because the same thoughts will pop up again. I see. That's a great exercise to perform, to retrain your mind to yeah. start focusing on ways that you can as opposed to can't. Earlier you stressed the word why and I've in in researching for this podcast I've came across you stressing the importance for every entrepreneur to find the why. Yeah. Can you give us some details on what that means and how do you find the why? Absolutely. So one of my chapters in my book is called She Knows Her Why. And I've had a lot of men read my book because it's very practical tips. But the reason that I started that, gosh, it's probably in one of my first few chapters, is because as someone that started being an entrepreneur at such a young age, I had a running office with 13 agents. And they were all doing really well. I have full-time office manager and secretary and assistant. Everyone's getting paid if I show up to work or not. If the boss doesn't show up to work, nobody stresses out. But guess what? If the boss doesn't show up to work, the boss isn't continuing to run the company and make money and move it forward. So I found that I kept losing my mojo. And I, I love using that word. It's just a fun word I learned from the movie Austin Powers. And I'm really big about having fun with your business. So I would wake up in the morning sometimes, not all the time, very here and there. It's like ups and downs. And I wouldn't be motivated. And guess what? I had to motivate myself. There was nobody out there waiting to motivate me. So my why was really important to me. My why for success. My why for wanting my company to succeed. For wanting to make money. For today it's inspiring people, motivating people through my speaking and so on. What was my why? So at, the, at that time and till today, my why has always been my children. I have three kids. And I want them to know that they can be and do whatever they desire in life. So I wanted them to see that through me. And then in the last few years, Mark, my why has been other people. Now, my kids never go away as my why. But now when someone says to me, why do you do what you do, Galit? 
I say because if I stand on stage and I inspire one person to make a different choice today, to recognize that it's possible to be an entrepreneur, possible to get past their crap, possible to succeed and be happy in their life, I feel like I've done my job. So the way that you can find your why, make a list. Make a list of everything that's important to you in your life. Everything that you strive to have in your life. And by the way, it doesn't matter if it's money. No one is joy judging you. Whatever motivates you, go for it. Okay? I think money is wonderful. I think one of the limited beliefs we have in society is we're not supposed to love money. And I think that's a mistake because money is, money is awesome. But I also don't believe that that's my why. Money for me is the, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, it's just getting my mind. For me is a motivator, of course, because making money is nice. But it also is the bonus, the bonus for me. So if you want to find your why, make a list of everything that you love in your life and you want more of, that you want to take care of. And then that will motivate you on those days where you need that little extra push. Great. I, I get that. I really do get that. With my last startup, my why was I wanted to make the world a safer place. And everything we did to build out the technology gave us the opportunity to provide information to individuals that were making decisions about who could get access to, to kids and to the elderly that needed support. And if your background wasn't clear, you couldn't get access to those sensitive populations. And so our drive was to make the technology better and better so that we could make the world a, a safer place. And it was our, our motivator and the drive to make us innovate, to make it easier for people to access the tools that we were building. So I, I, I get the why. I understand because that's what gets you out of bed when, 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 when things aren't going well. Yes, and, and it's not just the getting out of bed. That's just one example. Those days where the decisions you have to make are a struggle or things are not going the way that you would prefer they went. I mean, I, I survived a recession in Las Vegas in a commercial real estate industry. And let me tell you, my why pushed me every single day, and many companies closed during that, and we, we thrived and we succeeded and nobody left the company. So you've always got to be working on your mindset to understand that the way that things are in this moment, more than likely they will not be like this forever, and more than likely they won't be like this even tomorrow or next week. Yes, sometimes things take a bit longer. The recession was a good few years, but it's possible to overcome those obstacles to succeed. Let's now drill down into your book, The Successful Woman's Mindset. Refresh us on your motivation for writing the book. It's a really funny story. I actually was asked to speak a little over two years ago at the National Association of Women Business Owners. And I was back and forth with the person that was asking me to speak. And we were coming up with topics. And I said, well, what about this? And honestly, Mark, I can't even tell you how it came to me. It's just like any idea that I believe chooses you. And the successful woman's mindset was one of the topics that I sent her, and she loved it. And I put together my talk. It came to me exactly what I wanted to put. I did the talk. It was so well received. There were about 60 or 70 women there that for weeks and weeks after, every time I ran into a woman in the community at a different networking event, she would come up to me and thank me. So then I realized it. I was like, okay, wait. So from there, I built a program, the successful woman's mindset program where I had people that joined the program, paid me, and were part of it. So I'm watching this, and I'm going, wait, there's something here. Then I did a successful woman's mindset challenge, five-day challenge to change your mindset, and all of that stemmed into my book. And so that really pushed me. Now, that's how it got started. Now, why the mindset? I think at the end of the day, when I sat back and realized that I have so many tools to success that are logical, I had to sit back and understand why I was so successful. What was really the reason behind it? Yeah, great. I followed this and I did that. 
and I was good at this, but what was the real reason? And then I realized it was my positive attitude. It was that I believed in myself. It was that I knew my why. It was that I, and these are chapters in my book, it was that I loved to learn from the competition and never feared it, that I turned fear into determination, and so on and so forth. There's 21 chapters. I won't go through all of them. But these are the things that I've lived and breathed for the last 25 years through my entrepreneur journey. And that's when I realized, Glee, you've got to share this with people. They've got to see it's possible because the way we learn is through other people's journeys, failures, successes. And I share a lot of my failures that way too. If you were pulling the top three things out of your book that every woman would benefit from, what would those three things be? Gosh, three is, three is tough. I would probably say, number one, you've got to believe in yourself. I mean, you can go surround yourself with the most amazing people, and I've very been blessed to women that want to uplift me, support me, help me succeed, as well as my family and friends. Every crazy idea I show up with, they support me. But you've got to believe in yourself, because they can support me all day long. But if I question myself and don't believe in myself, it doesn't matter what they do, I will not succeed at that idea. The second one I would say probably is fear. Fear is a big one. So one of my chapters is turning fear into determination. We don't recognize the fine line associated between the two. And, and I won't go through all the details and steps, but that feeling that we get when we have fear, and I'm not talking red flags, Mark. I'm talking choices and decisions based on your job, on your career, on your business. When you stop, you've got to ask yourself why you're stopping. Why are you not doing this? And what is it about the fear that you want to give so much power to? And recognizing, okay, now look back at your life at a time where you were determined and you were going to push through. Instead, revisit the feeling of being determined to initially wipe out the fear and the fear. So I would most definitely want those listening to stop letting fear dictate your choices in your life. Please, stop, stop, stop. And then the third one, oh, gosh, there's so many that I love. Uh, oh, she is a work in progress is my last chapter. I love the word work in progress because I don't believe in perfection. And if you are anything like me, you're never going to, in a sense, reach your full abilities because you want to grow every day. So give, be kind to yourself and recognize you are a work in progress. You are not perfect. You're going to fail. You're going to mess up, and you're going to make mistakes. And be kind to yourself when you do. Those are very powerful messages for both men and, and women Oh yes. uh, to understand, particularly that last point on being a work in progress and not beating yourself up when you fail. When you look out over the landscape, what do you see, particularly at your workshops and other place, other clients that you may have, as some of the biggest barriers preventing women from achieving the success that they want, both in corporate America or as an entrepreneur? Number one, all day long, is themselves. All day long. I can't tell you how much I've seen it. And I've worked with some powerful women, and I've worked with stay-at-home moms that want to start a business so they can raise their kids, which I think is fabulous, just as fabulous as those that are powerhouses. Number one is themselves. You've got to recognize when you sit back and you make every excuse in the book, and let me tell you, I've heard it all. I have no time. I don't have any money. I don't know how. And on and on and on. I've heard everything. When you really look at it, what is the difference between you and that person you see as successful? One of the activities I love to do is, who do you see as successful? Why? Write down everything about that person that you see as successful. And everyone's got one person because you're always watching somebody else. And now sit back and say to yourself, would I be happy if I had everything that person had? Because a lot of times that's not the case. And then ask yourself, can you see yourself having everything that person has? And that's really about your own limitations that you set on yourself. 
That's great feedback. That is great feedback. I know whenever I uh, have worked with corporate executives, you know, that sort of benchmarking has brought a lot of clarity to their thinking when they can uh, look at themselves or their business uh, compared to a similarly situated uh, business or person. It provides some real clarity on the pathway they have to take to achieve that benchmark that they've set for themselves. So that's, that's some wonderful, wonderful advice. Where can people find your book, The Successful Woman's Mindset? It's available at all book retailers. So Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple, Kindle. It's just about everywhere. If you just type it into Google or go to one of those sites, you can find it. I know there's something like 24 different locations. I wouldn't even be able to name them all. And if people want to get in contact with you and start a dialogue or attend one of your workshops, how do they reach you? I'm very easily found as well, uh, GaliteVenturaRosen.com, as well as on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And they can get a hold of me in any of those formats. I'm, like I said, there's a contact form everywhere, so it's really easy to get in touch with me. And if you were to leave one final thought for our, our entrepreneurs, our gorillapreneurs, uh, particularly our female gorillapreneurs, what would you like to leave them with? I would leave them with this. Every level of success comes with comfort. So you get comfortable with your level. And please be aware that when you're ready to go to the next level, there's going to be a little resistance and there's going to be things that are going to show up in the shape of obstacles and challenges. The true, true, real goal would be to be aware of it and recognize it's going to come. And then, in a sense, and I always think of boxing gloves because I always think box it out, but what you want to do more than anything is just recognize it and push through it punch it, push it through, whatever it might look like for you. Because if you want to be more successful in your business, it is possible, but it will come with potentially fear, obstacles, challenges, and a lot of times also risk. But recognize that many times the success is worth it when you work your way through it. Excellent, excellent, excellent advice. Well, Galit, thank you so much for being on the Gorilla Panure podcast. You have helped me today. Uh, I'm sitting here taking notes and pulling out uh, my benchmarks and mapping my way to success because this has been clarifying for me. This make an appointment with yourself is uh, the best way to bring a mountain down. You know, with one little chop at a time as opposed to trying to take the mountain down all in one day make an appointment with yourself to take it down spoonful by spoonful in a way that you can digest it very clarifying very motivating and i'm going to put a lot of this in practice for myself so i know my gorilla panures are going to enjoy this episode as well thank you thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share what i believe is my purpose in life show as many people as possible that it is possible to be happy, successful, and also have a work-life balance, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you again. And Gorillapreneurs, this has been the Gorillapreneur Podcast. We appreciate you tuning in. Thank you, Galit, for a terrific interview. Check the show notes to find links on where you can find Galit's book or attend one of her workshops. Guys, Gorillapreneurs, Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Do you like what you hear? Well, then you may also like some of my other podcasts. Career Coaching X's and O's. That's career advice for executives seeking the corner office. Or you might also like Gigging, Everything in the Sharing Economy. That podcast provides news and predictions about the sharing economy. You can find both of those as well as Gorillapreneur on Speaker iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, and any of your other podcast listening platforms. I'll put links in the show notes. Gorillapreneurs, Scott Sullivan said it best in Episode 7. Be a mace. Sharpen those spikes 
And remember, if you're not breaking something, your company might be the next thing that gets broken. Thank you for listening to the Guerrillapreneur, the art of waging small business warfare podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, you may also enjoy the book Guerrillapreneur, Small Business Strategy for David Wanting to Defeat Goliath. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and iTunes. Follow Mark Peterson on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at, at Guerrillapreneur. Now I want to close with a quote from the great Chinese military strategist Sun Tzu. Victorious warriors went first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first, then seek to win. Keep fighting, guerrillapreneurs!